Hello, hello, hello. I'm Too Tight the Trek. Welcome back to Glitterature Alley, your back street, off the beaten path, under the radar, beyond the pale place to set your senses all a sparkle while we talk about everything literary. Today is the second installment of my Shake Tube presentations, and we are going to do today King John. This is my Kittredge Shakespeare King John that I've had for a number of years and have never read. And this is my new Kittredge William Shakespeare, which is the one that I did read. I like these Kittredge Shakespeare's because they talk a little bit about staging and things that one might miss if one were reading too quickly and not taking time to stop and think about other things that are not on the page. So this is a handy dandy guide. So what to say about King John? No, really, what to say? <sighs> well, I found it a very interesting reading experience where most of my mental energy veered off into the land of what the hey? So it's written as a history. It ends as a bit of a tragedy. But as I was reading it, it read not like a comedy, but somewhat comically, simply because I didn't quite grasp. Um, it, it seemed to be a lot of information without a lot of contemplation. And so I think you already know where the marks will fall at the end of this, but it's kind of like one of those action movies where it's action, 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 action. Of course, in this case, if you, by action, you mean a lot of talking, that's what this is. But it's like an action movie where things happen or are supposed to happen, but in the end, you're just left with a lot of smoke and sawdust. That's sort of how I felt about King John, the life and death of King John, this is cause, called. There isn't a lot of pausing for quiet contemplation here, and not a lot of emotional development. So I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. I, I don't really like this whole plot relaying because Shakespeare's plots can be so convoluted and um, a lot of things happen and a lot of peripheral things happen, but I do think it's important to get a basic idea of what's been going on. So the conflict is that King John is the king of England and his reign is being threatened by three different sources. There's his older brother's son, who is named Arthur. So that's his nephew Arthur and Arthur's mother, Constance. They believe that the throne should be Arthur's. And well, Constance does. Arthur's a bit young. Constance believes that the throne should actually be Arthur's and not John's because uh, Arthur is the son of John's older brother. They want that throne. There's a rival country, France, that sides with Constance and says that's correct because once they side with Constance, they can sort of divvy up the lands in France and in England, give lots of people titles, give lots of other people land. They want it all for themselves, but King John says, no, it's mine. And lastly, there's the Catholic Church that says, you're the king of England, but you know, there's another king, God, and you're going to have to bow down before him and your throne is really nothing if you're not bowing down to the church, in particular the Pope in Rome. So that's the main conflict. Now the play starts out with this strange uh, scene in which someone who has no relation to any of this, uh, he has some relation, but um, someone's contesting the fact of their name and who their who their actual father is. And it turns out there's 
a man who will be called the bastard throughout and come to find out he's the illegitimate son of King John's oldest brother Richard the Lionhearted but because he's illegitimate he has no threat he's no threat to the throne he becomes a friend of King John King John says yes I recognize you're an illegitimate son of Richard the Lionhearted you're my friend we're buddies we'll help each other throughout all these battles so the bastard shows up now I'm going to do another plot summary as quickly as possible the bastard shows up friend of the family now the French ambassador comes to England and insists that John abdicate the throne and give it to Arthur John says no decides to go to France to fight to the town of Angers at Angers they don't fight they meet and they talk 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 I'm gonna win I'm gonna win so big and France says no I'm gonna win I'm gonna win so big it goes on like this the citizens are standing but beside them saying you know what we don't really think either one of you are the best but do whatever you want they go out they fight the English Herald comes back into the town square and says to the French all the French are dead we're the clear winners we win we're the winners England is tops the French Herald comes back in and says all the English are dead the French are the winners we're the winners we're the top <sighs> the English say no we're winning the French say no we're winning no puppet no puppet you're the puppet okay the citizens of Angers say shut up neither one of you have won we can see you're both standing here we don't know what you're talking about if you really want to tear up our town we, we really would rather you do something else like make peace how about this France's son the Dauphin the French Prince of Bel Air I guess we could call him the French Prince the Dauphin can marry King John's niece England and France could be united um, sorry Constance and Arthur you'll be out of it but France and England will be reunited and they can divvy it up as they want Constance and Arthur will be left out everyone says that's a fine idea peace is better than war Constance finds out she throws a fit um, King John says sorry kidnaps Arthur takes him away to England um, and then suddenly the, the papal messenger comes in and says hang on hang on France you're Catholic England we know you're Protestant but still God and all that you got to bow down to the Pope King John says no way France says uh, I don't know we have peace but yeah but I don't know but you know yeah maybe but no but I don't know I don't know and the papal messenger says get on board if you don't bow down to the Pope which you already have you'll be excommunicated and John will be excommunicated and and you don't want that so John's already ex excommunicated France is like okay deals off we're at war again so John goes back to England kidnaps Arthur Pope papal embassy, embassy, embassy guy comes again and says really John you gotta bow down and he says why don't you go kiss the Pope's nose not for me um, is anybody tired yet because <laughs> I know I am at this point so at this point things go all awry people switch sides people switch back sides threats are made people switch sides again it's all kind of a mishmash John finally does capitulate to the church once he does capitulate to the church because he feels he's getting he's losing all of his followers he's poisoned by a monk and spoiler alert in the life and death of King John John dies King Henry 
John's son rises to the throne to become King Henry III. So, the life and death of King John is ridiculous plot point after ridiculous plot point. And if this was all it was, you and I would be completely justified in hating it. But there are a few really interesting scenes, and the language is really interesting, particularly with the bastard. Sometimes with Constance, but mostly with the bastard. The bastard is a character who is, by all rights, should be on the periphery and not even in the middle of any of this, but he stands sometimes as a fool, sometimes as a chorus, and sometimes as the only character who stops and thinks and has any sort of moral compass. And and he's the most sensible voice throughout the entire play. Now, if you're reading through it quickly, it's easy to think that it's just a comical thing, but it's not actually very comical. And even Constance's parts, where she finds out that Arthur is being taken away from her, and, and the men are kind of like, well, just shut up, Constance. And she says, no, I'm not shutting up. My son has been taking away from me. I'm devastated. Everything that I counted on was gone, is gone. And, and they say, oh, you're overreacting. You're just acting like you're crazy. It's okay. And, and she says, I'm not crazy. And she gives this n very long speech, which if you don't take time to, to really think about how it's delivered, because everybody else around her is telling her she's crazy, it's, it's, it's a very subtle movement on Shakespeare's part. And I didn't even really see it until I happened upon a reading of it on YouTube by an actress named Camille O'Sullivan. And I'm going to link that below so that you can see it. It's Constance, Constance's mad speech where she says, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm completely sane. And it's very, very moving and, and wonderful. So that speech is quite good. There are a number of a number of other examples where, for instance, when King John goes back to England and he calls his buddy Hubert over and says, you know, I need, it's, it's, it's a seduction scene. It's a very, very, very strange scene where John says, oh, I wanted to tell you something, but I'm not going to tell you just yet. But, you know, I love you. I, I really love you. You're so great. And I was going to tell you something else, but I'm not going to tell you. And he goes on and on like this. And finally, at the end, um, it really reads almost like a romantic seduction. And then, come to find out, he wants Hubert to kill Arthur. And Arthur says, okay, I will. Turns out, the scene with Arthur and Hubert, Arthur isn't killed. He convinces Hubert not to kill him. Everyone thinks that he's dead. King John thinks he's dead. And when everyone finds out that Arthur or believes Arthur is dead, that's when everything start going all to pot for John. And John s tells Hubert, who he once seduced, if it weren't for you, he wouldn't be dead. And, you know, all you had to do was say no. And Hubert says, well, actually, I did say no, and he's still alive. Tell everybody then. Tell everybody, get everybody back on my side, John says. And as Hubert goes to do this, little Arthur jumps out the window and dies. Was he trying to escape? Was it suicide? Was he just stupid? Hard to tell. But, so there's that example of a scene where it's, it's, there's more going on than meets the eye. There's another scene where the citizens of Angiers propose peace by marrying the Dauphin and Arthur's, or I'm sorry, King John's niece. And the bastard stands by. The citizen gives this long, 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 long speech about why they should marry and it would create peace. And it's, uh, it's a bit long-winded. And, and the bastard is standing by and says, he speaks plain cannon fire and smoke and bounce. He gives the bastinado with his tongue. Our ears are cudgeled. Not a word of his, but Buffett's better than a fist of France. Zounds. I was never so bethumped with words since I first called my brother's father dad. 
which I found to be incredibly funny and and quite sensible too because there are all these people speechifying and and the bastard's the only one who will call anyone out on it. He usually doesn't call them out to their faces. Sometimes he does, but it's often an aside. Later in that same scene, in a direct address to the audience, he comments how ridiculous everybody is. All these supposedly regal people are making these horribly important decisions with not even a shred of moral imperative. There's no, there's nothing about morality involved in their decisions. It's all self-interest and greed and what they can, what sort of advantage they can find from it. And the bastard stands back and, and talks about this, which I found very interesting. And it's one of those moments of quiet contemplation that one looks for. Um, so, if there were more of that, or if I were to read it again more slowly and to think about how it might be staged, or if I were to see it staged in a way that brought out more of these subtleties and complexities and moments of torment and quiet contemplation and, and thoughts about what it means to live in such a strange, strange world where politicians are liars. Hmm. I wonder what that must be like. So, I would say, I can't give this my special star, my special sparkle star, but I don't hate it. It's a history, I don't necessarily love histories. It's that whole plot thing again, plot, 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 action, 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 or speech, speech, speech. But there are a few moments in here that are really worth listening to and um, paying attention to. So that's it for King John and that's it for me for this week it's up to you to go out and get your best sparkles on and flout them around and make someone pay attention to you while you pay attention to the world and all of its wonders until we meet again I am too tight Latrec mm -hmm.